It's the big show, and on the big show, we like to talk to old friends and legends. Sir Cliff Richard, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I've got something nice to say to you. Oh, good, that makes a change. This new album, (laughs) best thing you've recorded in years. You're, that is very nice. I tell you, that's fantastic to hear because, you know, as you know, it's kind of not my genre of music, but I've grown over the years to, you know, to let myself listen to the Sinatras and the Matt Monroe's and people, and I've been so impressed by the way they do things and the songs they sang. So when the opportunity arose, I thought, this is my time to do it. I'm not saying your other stuff was rubbish. Don't get me wrong. We've spoken many times over the years, and you know I'm one of your biggest fans, but this is terrific. I've been banging it out on the air for weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh, great. And I think it's so fit to you. And I remember a discussion we had in your office years ago, came down to near Heathrow, and there you were, sat telling me that you've wanted to make this for a long time, but a couple of people beat you to the post, didn't they? (laughs) They did, yeah. They released their records b- before I recorded mine, even though I'd been present, I'd been pr- preparing it for many, many years before they'd released it. And uh, I then I just fought shy of it because I didn't want to th- let the pe- the public think that I was following the footsteps of Robbie and Rod, and th- their albums were great. I mean, I I still play Rod's albums. I thought they were fantastic. So. Someone else said to me, look, nobody owns this music. They don't own it and you don't own it. They've sung it. If you want to sing it, sing it. So I did. I went to, the, I went to Nashville and with the help of some great musicianship and a wonderful producer, um, out came Boulder's Brass. And now I've just got my fingers crossed. So you telling me that... Alex, that is very encouraging, I tell you, because you know, even even when you make a regular, even when I made my ordinary albums, you're never quite sure whether you've hit it right. Well, let me tell you, I never have a guest on and tell them they're rubbish, because the truth is I need you on again. Um, <laughs> but normally what I do is just not mention it, just talk about other stuff. So take it as a compliment. Not that Thank my you. opinion counts for anything, you oh, it understand. Does. It uh, does. It talking... does, because there's people listening to you. <laughs> talk about my opinion. Let, let me give you another opinion. Those plonkers on the one show the other day, can I apologise? Starting an interview by when are you going to retire is not the smartest thing to do on live telly is it (laughs) i know but i guess it's because my birthday had just happened and 70 and things like that what with the kerfuffle in france where they've terrified of being retired at 62 we're already up to 67 aren't we so i I guess they were trying to be topical in a way what were they thinking though i mean you're our greatest living legend in terms of music you were there before anyone else and all they talk about is when are you going to finish yeah then we talked about adam faith you're right (laughs) (laughs) it's all about you that's the thing um there's a few things i want to cover in this interview and we haven't got long so we better get on with it Okay. Uh, how's the wine business doing this year for a start? Good. It should be good. I, of course, we're not drinking this year's wine because it's only just been plucked from the vines. But last year and the year before were two wonderful summers where lots of sunlight and cool nights. And we've, we're making some good wine, I tell you, really good wine. We just want to, in, in the Algarve, we swept the board. My red, the white and rosé all got gold medals. There was a, a wine festival in Germany where there were 49 countries presented thousands of wines. And I won a gold for my rosé. So I'm very happy with it. Very nice. Any chance you could send us a bottle? Yes. I've said nice (laughs) things about your album. Um, Tell me something you've done. I think it's 18 months since we last spoke face to face. What have you been up to? Tell me something you've not told anyone else. Oh, Alex, I don't know whether I can do that because, I, you know, <laughs> when you think about it, like Shakespeare wrote seven different plots and apparently there are only seven plots in the same way life is about that. There's probably seven things that we all do only in different times and different in variety of ways. I've been, I visited America and Portugal and Barbados. I've been to another tennis tournament. Um, you see, you make that sound... tendon in my right ankle. You make that sound like everybody's doing that, going to Barbados and America as regularly as you do. I mean, you do live an extraordinary life, and so you deserve to, because you've had great success over the years. You mentioned your injury there. Was that a sporting injury? How did that happen? It was. I was playing tennis in, in Singapore on a very bad grass court, rushed forward for a drop shot to collect one, and I felt... I didn't... It didn't snap. I felt a tug and a pain, and I, then I couldn't walk for a while. I had to find. Fortunately, it was just before my tour started with the Shadows in Australia, and so I had a, a week or so to ease it off. But I stopped. I didn't play tennis till August again, so it was very painful. I, t- t- tendons a really vulnerable area, but uh, it's much better now, and I'm I'm back to the, on the tennis court. Let's play a track from this new album. Then it's called Boulder's Brass. Uh, my favourite. I just want to make love to you, not in a mucky way. I mean, in a, in a manly kind of way through the record. Shall we play it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're back with Sir Cliff Richard on your favourite local radio station. What about that, then? It's done properly because you don't want to make a cheap version where you're using fake uh, trumpets and things like that. You actually had a proper orchestra, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Michael and Martin, who produced it, arranged uh, for four arrangers to come and do me these very authentic-sounding, I think you'll agree, uh, orchestrations. And then he had the best people he could find in Nashville. One of them came from New York. 
and they were all just brilliant swing musicians. So it was a, a treat to, to go in and, and sing with that. And again, I used an orchestra here uh, at the Albert Hall last week, and again, they were fantastic. You forget sometimes, because you, because I've lived with rock and roll for so long, you tend to only think about guitarists and occasionally a brass a brass section that, that rock and rollers will find, and then they'll use that brass section. Everybody use the same one. But there are a bunch of people around that are very gifted and talented. Mm. And so uh, it was just wonderful to work with that kind of that that quality of musician. I had the boys on from the shadows earlier on in the year, and I asked them the same question I'm going to ask you now. When does it become normal and acceptable that you walk on stage and 50,000 people are screaming for your body? <laughs> well, I'm not sure they're screaming for our bodies anymore, but... Um, oh, yes, it, they are. It's pretty... It's, it doesn't become... It never becomes normal. It never does. I mean, we, the one sentence that, that I'll always think of backstage is, I wonder what the audience is like. You know... So you never actually take it for granted that they're going to go crazy. Okay, you get out there, and then they all get up and create scream, and you're make, made to feel very welcome in whatever town you happen to be performing in. And within two songs, you think, okay, this audience is really good. And that tends to be general. That mm. seems to be the truth night after night. I listed six shows at the Albert Hall. Okay, there might be one that something happens. I mean, one night, for instance, the audience seemed to be looser than other nights, and one yes. woman stood up. Well, loose and free and easy and just seemed to be loving everything. And one woman stood up on my left-hand side when I was leaving, and I, she had a, a banner up, mm -hmm. a board, and on it was written, Cliff is hotter than Robbie. Well, when I went to take my final bows, I grabbed it from her and ran around the whole auditorium saying, true, true. <laughs> so when something like that happens, it only happens because the audience allows you to feel free within yourself. But on the whole, audiences are pretty darn good now, and they're very kind to us. So with the shadows, of course... Everybody was desperate to see us, possibly for the last time, together again. And mm -hmm. we hold memories for them. And that's what I, I said to the boys. You know, I've thought about this many times. I've sung Living Doll a million times now. And when I go out there, sometimes there'll be a couple on the front row. And as I start Living Doll, you'll see the guy dig his elbow into his, his lady friend. And I'm thinking to myself, now he either... He either proposed to her that day and she became his Living Doll, or they had their first baby when Living Doll was out. So I, I think of that. Actually, Hank said, Hank said to me, no, he's going to a, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> he would though, Hank. You talk about you being hot and very funny. I need to talk to you. I've been quite fawning, I think, during this interview about your new album, which is tremendous. And I look forward to seeing the DVD as well at the Albert Hall. But I'm a relatively young man and I'm doing my best to get the ladies. It don't help when people in their 70s look better than I do at <laughs> half your age. Cliff, will you stop it? <laughs> I will. I'll try very hard. <laughs> I mean, these pictures on the calendar, I keep seeing them everywhere I go. I mean, you don't even blush anymore. You go, that's me. Yes, that's me. Look, look at me, Mr. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you write a new album called Mr. Delicious? That'll go down that well. That sounds like pretty good to me. I, wrote, but I, I think that's it. I think I'll do that now. I'll, I must have the confidence to do it, though. Always nice to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming on the programme. A real thrill, as always. Your new album called Bold as Brass. I just think is lovely, and uh, it should be on the playlist everywhere. For me, <laughs> it's the most listenable and enjoyable album you've done in years, so congratulations on that. Alex, and thank you very always much. Always nice to talk to you, Cliff. And I'll see you and talk to you again, I hope.